Today, we're going to talk about the five stages men go through before they'll commit to you. And you have to stick around because this is really juicy stuff. So can we just get real today? I think you want that. You know, dating and relationships is a gigantic challenge uh, in our current environment because we no longer meet people traditionally the way we did hundreds, if not thousands of years ago, whether it was the tribe we lived in, the city we lived in, the town we lived in, the village we lived in. We connected with people whom we knew. They were friends oftentimes. They were, they were connected to another relative or uh, somebody you knew, maybe a family member. And so it's radically challenging today to even get to a level of commitment because these days we're meeting total strangers. And why is this so critically important? Because for those of us in midlife, and my channel is for those people in midlife, which I say is after baby making years and before retirement, a significant percentage of people in this age demographic are divorced, meaning their previous relationship ended. In fact, Depending on how long you've been divorced, you might have had several other relationships in your life. Do you know, I recognize now, and this is anecdotal on my part, I would say the average person has had five relationships that were three months or longer. Let me repeat that, three months or longer. Many of you have had a marriage that was 10, 20, maybe even 30 years. Now, I'm going to exclude those people that lost their spouse to death, but those who went through divorce, okay? We'll talk about the ones who lost their spouse as well. But why is this so critically important? It seems like if you're watching this video, chances are you're either in a relationship with someone, but you've had relation every relationship you had up until the relationship you have now has ended, most likely outside of death. So when it comes to dating and relationships today, I'm inviting everyone to be crystal clear on their motives. Crystal clear on their motives. Do you have a short-term motive or a long-term motive? See, if you're gonna get to commitment, most likely you're going to need a long-term motive. And what does long-term mean? What does commitment even mean? Maybe we should explore that for a moment if you have a See, the problem is for a lot of women out there and, and men, okay, a lot of women are frustrated because a significant percentage of men do not have a long-term motive. They are not crystal clear on what they want. They know they want companionship. They know they want connection. They know they want physical intimacy, but what's missing is commitment. And I would say a significant percentage of men feel this way and also women as well, but women tend to want to bond and commit to someone more so than men traditionally. So let's examine commitment for a moment. Well, the first level of commitment in my mind is the agreement to monogamy and exclusivity, the agreement to monogamy and exclusivity. This is where you call someone your boyfriend and girlfriend. You're agreeing to take yourself off the dating apps. In fact, they don't even call it commitment. They don't even call it boyfriend and girlfriend anymore. I was watching a, a TV show the other day and they announced everyone. They didn't say we're boyfriend and girlfriend. They said, we're off the apps. And everybody clapped and cheered at the restaurant where he was asking to be his girlfriend, asking her to be his girlfriend. But they announced that they're just getting off the apps. Okay. First level and the agreement of monogamy. Look at these days with polyamory and so many other different, you know, hooking up, friends with benefits, situationships, casual relationships, casual relationships can have monogamy and exclusivity. Let me let me agree with that. Um, so that's the first level of commitment. What's the next level of commitment? And we're going to talk about the five stages in a moment. What's the next level of commitment is teamwork when you've actually begin operating as a team. And we're, that's what we're gonna lean in today in these five stages is operating as a team. And the third level of commitment is all in. All in, for better, for worse, I'm going down with the ship here. Sadly, many of people have made that agreement, but they got out of it through divorce. <laughs> but at least it's an intention. So why is this so important to recognize all of this? You know, 
is because it's very challenging today when you begin to connect with another human being and emotions get involved, you get attached to another human being. Oftentimes what people believe is love is actually an insecure attachment with another person. If you're brand new to my channel and you're or you're a regular, I'm just going to share this with everybody. I invite you to read the book Attached by Amir Levine and Rachel Heller, because oftentimes what you believe is love is an insecure attachment with another human being or what many of you experience is known as the deception of chemistry. This is where lust and limerence comes in, lust or limerence. And when we feel this sense of lust or limerence with somebody, and limerence is just, lust is that sexual desire to be with someone, and limerence is extreme infatuation. That's what some people call fireworks is an extreme infatuation. Oftentimes, those relationships don't go the distance. But let's go to that second level of commitment, teamwork. And what I'm going to talk about today, we are going to apply the Tuckman model to illustrate the, this point. Tuckman's Stages of Development, FSNP, um, actually SF, FSNPA, okay, describe the stages of psychological development a team goes through as they work on a project. So I want someone write this in the chat box, or excuse me, in the uh, in the comments. Tuckman's stages of psychological psychological development for a team team tuckman's stages of development team okay we're going to dive into this so there's five stages a team goes through stage one is forming oh by the way let me i, I just said it forming but i'm going to repeat myself in a second i'm going to apply this model to our current dating environment our relationship environment so number one is forming this is mostly focused on the attraction piece of relationship. It's the first 90 days of two people getting to know each other. Now, here's the thing. Many of you might be going, but Jonathan, I'm in a long distance relationship. Folks, to build the deep roots of trust in a team, ideally you're doing it through social activities, hobbies, mutual interest, spending time with family and friends, maybe even traveling together, but teamwork building school skills. This is how we form commitment with another human being is to get to that second level of commitment is developing the teamwork through the forming stage. But Jonathan, I'm in a long distance relationship. Well, folks, when you're considering anything with distance where you can't regularly see each other at least twice a week at a minimum, twice a week at a minimum, you are potentially setting yourself up for failure. And if you're considering a long distance dynamic, then you better have a game plan of shortening that distance because most likely you are experiencing what I call the spender relationships, where you spend time with each other through companionship, connection, and sex, but you're not reaching that stages of teamwork or commitment. So forming is number one. Number two, and this is where very most couples end their relationship. This is where most couples end their relationship is in the storming stage. This is where our differences begin to emerge, our communication style differences, our commitment differences. This is where conflict begins to emerge. If you haven't read the book, Eight Dates by Drs. John and Julie Gottman, I'm going to open this up. This is chapter three. Excuse me, chapter two, please forgive me. Why don't you see this? It says, agree to disagree, addressing conflict. This is when you're storming. Folks, healthy relationships, long-term healthy relationships have a capacity to identify their problems, to identify their differences, and to work through those differences through compassionate communication. If you haven't read the book, I'm going to recommend two books today. The first book is Nonviolent Communication by Marshall Rosenberg. For folks, this should have been titled Compassionate Communication. You must 
read this book if you ever are going to form a teammate with somebody. And the follow-up book that I want to recommend is called I Hear You by Michael Sorensen, The Surprisingly Simple Skills Behind Extraordinary Relationships. I recommend reading these and read them with the guy you're beginning a teammate with. Because if you cannot survive conflicts, and most people, and by the way, conflicts isn't just differences of opinion. It's differences in the way you operate in the world. Very few people are identical in the way they view things. Maybe it's the way they, they run their life. I know some people, they, have a, they're not, they don't make good roommates with one another. They make terrible roommates. They don't know how to do chores properly, as an example. That's people who live together. But the storming stages were probably 90%, excuse my slurping, by the way, 90% of relationships end is in the storming stage. But if you can persevere past the storming stage, if you can push past it, if you can get through the, and by the way, you're always going to be storming. Let me just be clear. You're always going to be storming. But if you push past the heavy storms in the early stages of dating, by the way, it's 11-11 right now. Um, You've reached a stage of norming. This is overcoming your differences because the whole is greater than the parts. This is where you begin to reach a level of acceptance with another human being. Folks, when you have a difference, okay, particularly, first, you have to tolerate the difference. Whatever that difference may be, it may be the way you make the bed as a, as a different way. Maybe the way you uh, operate, you know, some, for example, some people only like to clean the kitchen once every other day. And some people like the kitchen clean before they go to bed. I'm just using household chores to illustrate a point. It could be um, one big difference could be, um, um, what's it called? Uh, laughter, um, sarcastic sense of humor. This is where a lot of people have conflict is their different sense of humors. But in your differences, first you reach a level of tolerance. If you can't tolerate a difference, you're, you, it's not going to work. But next level, of, so there's tolerance. The next level is understanding the difference. If you can't reach an understanding, it's going to be difficult to move to the next level. And this is the norming stage of a relationship, is accepting the differences. If you can't accept the differences, then you're going to have resentments. And most of the time, you know what happens when you don't accept a difference? This is where most people expect the other person to change. Folks, people are who they are. By the time by the time someone reaches midlife, they are who they are. Personality is, I mean, pretty close to being permanent, okay? Behaviors can change, but personality, I mean, I'm saying for the most part, okay? So if you can't overcome your differences in norming, the relationship is going to most likely end or fail. Next is called performing, performing in Tuckman's model. Performing in my illustration is shared vision, growing together, consciously growing together, whatever that looks like for each couple. You have a vision of your life beyond the surface. You see, sadly, many of us grew up with the vision of go to college, get a job, meet a girl, get married, buy a house, meet a girl or guy, excuse me, uh, get married, buy a house, start a family. Okay. For those of us in midlife, we need a new vision of what a relationship container looks like. For me, it's, 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 it's teamwork. That's what a relationship looks like, integrating into each other's lives as team. Having a shared vision of the way you want to see your retirement and beyond that, performing. And the fifth stage is the recognizing that if you can't reach a level of deep commitment with another person. The fifth stage of a team is to adjourn. A good couple knows when a relationship has reached its end. Death do us part is admirable, but it can be foolish as well. When you recognize that adjourning, or, and then eventually you will mourn. By, by the way, it's important to go through a mourning of a relationship that ended to go through a grieving process, but a journey for some people, many of you followed me and I was in a significant relationship a year ago and we had to adjourn. We had different 
visions of our lives. We went through those th three stages. We got to the performing stage and we had a different vision in our lives. I shared this publicly and we adjourned. And that's the fifth stage. And that's okay. There are juicy lessons from every relationship. I, I said earlier, many of us have had five significant relationships of three months or longer. There are a lot of lessons, beautiful lessons. And when we can look back at a relationship with a sense of pride, a sense of, 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 of learning more about ourselves, we become a better teammate going forward. Folks, is this resonating with you? <laughs> is this sinking in? <laughs> I hope it is. Excuse that slurp again. I hope you found value in the Tuckman model to discuss the five stages men go through before they commit. It's really men and women in this particular case. This is something men and women can apply in their lives. And I invite you to do more research at understanding teammates because that's the second level of commitment. And when you go all in, that's the third level of commitment. You're like, I want to I want to spend the rest of my life with this person. And I hope you reach that level of commitment in your life. Again, if this is sinking in, post a comment below. I do my best to read them all. As always, if you find value in my videos, hit please hit that like button. Please share this video. Please subscribe to my channel. Hit that notification bell so you can be notified of new videos. Also, don't forget to hit that notification bell on your phone too. And if you want to connect with me directly, there's links below to schedule a discovery call with me to see if working with a coach is right for you. There's a link to join my group called Midlife Love Mastery. There's links to get all the uh, books I recommend all listed below. All right, I'm going to wrap up this video as I always do. First off, give myself a big gigantic Jonathan Barrow of self-love. I'm going to reach into the camera and give you a hug of love if that's okay. I'm going to ask you to turn to someone, a pet, a teddy bear, a pillow, and give it or them a hug of love because hugs are a great source of love. And let's face it, we could all use more love in our lives. Thanks a bunch. Bye-bye now. Bye. Bye.